Did recruits know ahead of time that Mike Yersich was getting canned? You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That is right. You are Locked On Nittany Lions. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day where you're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, bringing you all things Penn State Nittany Lions coverage. Welcome back to the show. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Happy Thanksgiving to Brian Smith, recruiting expert here, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy. And since Brian's the king of recruiting, we also talk about the king of job recruiting. LinkedIn jobs these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Brian, I, there was a report after an interview was given by Beckham Kritza. And you know Kritza well because he played in the state of Florida for a year before transferring back to Colorado area high school where he is from. Uh, but gave an interview, and I'll credit the report to Audrey Snyder of The Athletic, who uh, does incredible work, uh, but helped break this news and and i think it's fitting to discuss it with you because this is a big deal according to kritza he was told by the coaching staff in no uncertain terms that mike yersich might not be around uh for for very long and this was kind of leading up to even before the 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 big day right the the saturday game against michigan and then ultimately he was probably fired immediately after the game but the news broke on Sunday here. So Beckham Kritza essentially said that, well, James Franklin kind of told him that Mike Yersich wasn't going to be around. I, I find that really interesting. I, I wonder how many other recruits and how many other people, whether they're committed or not, how many people knew about this, that this was going to be the plan, that this was going to be a possibility. And, and the way that it was framed is that this was more of a sure thing than an unsure thing. I, I just when when a coach when a coach is actively recruiting all of these guys, just how do you how do you balance all that? Because it's not like they said, you know what, Mike, you're gonna sit this one out. You're not gonna recruit these players. Mike Yersich was still trying to do the best to put Penn State's best foot forward. I mean, I'm guessing that it just came up in conversation because the negative recruiting against Penn State. I guarantee you that's part of it. And to be honest. It's fair game. If you're an OC, you want to know who your quarterbacks are going to be. If you're a quarterback and you're getting recruited, you want to know who your OC. It goes both ways. Yeah. And I'm sure he had asked members of the staff, hey, okay, things aren't looking real good. It's constantly on the message boards. At some point, Franklin had to cut bait with that conversation. You know what I mean? Like, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, this is the time. So he did, and I give him credit because – too often, coaches depants themselves by saying so and so safe, and then two weeks later, season ends, they fire it. So if you're a parent and or a coach of a kid and the kid himself that's being recruited, wait a minute, you just told me two weeks ago this way. So Franklin was on the up, and I know it's awkward, but there's just no way to do that in a friendly manner. And the guy hadn't done a good job. I think that's pretty obvious. So I have no problem with it, and I actually golf clap here. That's the way you should have it. Just be honest with hmm. the kid. You know what I mean? Because you're just going to make it worse otherwise. There was no good answer, by the way. There was just not. So that's the best he could have done. And I'm glad that you brought up that word, honest, because that's what Beckham Kritz has said. What was one of the deciding right. factors of why you committed to Penn State? Because James Franklin was honest with me. Honesty what was the bottom line to Kritz's commitment. So who wonders what else they were honest about, right? I, I think that Penn State is probably going to take a second quarterback in this class. That there's So they probably said, hey, we're going to be honest with you, Bekim. You're going to have some competition. You're not going to be the only one in this class of 2025 sure. that is going to be a quarterback in this group. We are going to try to find a counterpart and probably someone who's ranked higher than you. I just find it I find it very interesting just because of the dynamic. I can only imagine the conversations that Mike Yersich 
would have had with Becky and Kritza saying like, hey, you're going to love it here. This is how you're going to work and fit into our offense. And then there's just a different type of communication. And James Franklin is subtly hinting at that guy's not going to be here. I don't know how much you should. It's it's not that black and white. It's not. But I just find I find it a little ironic. And the fact that it doesn't hurt coaches all the time. But like you said, it seems like Penn State handled it the best of its ability. Well, I, I like to tell people this, and I, this is a phrase that I came up with 25 plus years ago, but it's mm-hmm. still true today. By and large, if you show me a coach that's always honest in recruiting, I will show you a coach that's soon to be on the unemployment line. Now, I said always. There are certain circumstances, if you lie like this one, it's going to bite you. Yep. Now, sometimes you say that the depth chart's wide open. All coaches lie about depth charts. I, it, it's whatever. Injuries and depth charts. Don't believe anything coaches say. But when it comes to a guy getting fired that's going to be directly your coach, if you're not honest with the young man, and again, hats off to anybody that I assume was primarily Franklin that said, hey, this isn't working, probably going to be moving on. It was smart to get out ahead of it. And he's going to benefit from it from the long term. Because I'm guessing this isn't the first person, nor shall it be the last that he does that with. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody else is safe on the staff. I mean, no one's going to get canned anyway but when it's your offensive coordinator your quarterbacks coach quarterback is the most important position in, in the game not even close ball. college not football even. nfl it, it doesn't matter quarterback is the most important spot so this is it's not like this was a graduate assistant by by any means this was you know, Manny diaz and mike Yersich were supposed to be the head coaches of their respective units the offense and the and the defense here and, and one of your guys was a, everybody else almost knew that Mike Yersich had one foot out the door on un- unintentionally here, not by his choice. I think that's kind of hard because even going into the year, there were questions about it. Now, I don't think yep. anybody expected one for 16 against Ohio state on third down or whatever it was, no. but I mean, no. for the love of mankind, it, you would think some of their talent would take over and there's player issues yeah. here that you and I will get into as well. But he just wasn't very imaginative, and I don't think that Drew had much confidence in the offense based on his inability to throw intermediate and deep passes on third downs. He was checked down Charlie, and he's got one of the strongest arms in college mm-hmm. football. Watching Penn State offense is like watching paint dry, so that should never be the case. That's a top 15 program all time by pretty much any measurement, possibly top 10, and yet they can't, they can't score, so yeah. I don't I don't give any credence to why and all that. I'm not going to get it. Like Franklin knows what's going on there. And that guy's get, walking away with a lot of money not to do anything. So I think all parties ended up doing okay on this. Well, you teased it a little bit, Brian, that there were more problems with this puzzle than just Mike Yersich's game planning, play calling, wide receiver. It was a big question mark coming into the season. It proved to be the case. Now we have the statement about what the wide receivers could do, or I guess what they couldn't do. And now there needs to be another overhaul. If not one, this one should be more drastic and more extreme. We're going to discuss that in just a moment. Let's talk about one of our sponsors on today's episode, and that is Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including the pros and the sharks, that's no fun. You pick more than or less than on a two to six player stack projection and just watch those winnings roll in. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into 250 with just a few taps. Price picks is really simple to play. You make your picks and you can submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, as I've mentioned, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And with the Prize Picks reboot policy, your entries will stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For NFL games, college top 25 matchups, if you have a player that exits the game in the first half, does not return for the second half, that player is then rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. So now what do you got to do? You go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. 
And today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs, then add your job and the purple hiring frame to let your to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are, in fact, hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills, just the right experience, so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and then hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And the Locked On Podcast Network is very proud of this one, something they have recently launched, and that is the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 national streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, 365 covering the top sports stories on the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe for the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. How about that? That is that is extremely exciting for the network, Brian. I think it's pretty cool, and I checked it out. Anything that you want, especially on the pro level, NHL, NFL, whatever, and then they mix yeah. in college sides too. I was a little skeptical how they're going to do it, but it's pretty good, and it's well run. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, and I actually go check it out once in a while. Yep. Nope. It's a full 24 seven network. So you have your full sports digest, as Brian mentioned, all the pro teams, plus any of the college teams, college channels as well. And they continue to expand as we've at, you know, added teams like locked on Terps, for example, into the fold, in addition to all the teams in the big 10, the, you know, pack pack 12, whatever it is now, right. Uh, the big 12 ACC, SEC, et cetera. Uh, and locked on, locked on sports today, 24 7. Go check it out on YouTube. Let's get back into it, Brian. Penn State wide receivers overhaul is certainly needed here uh, for the second year in a row. Marcus Haggins, I won't, I can't put too much responsibility on him because he comes in in the middle of the cycle. This is the year to get adjusted to Happy Valley, get adjusted to the situation that you're in, and make the most with the parts that you have. You can only do so much. Well, Getting Dante Cephas, we thought was going to be a game changer. Malik Mega, or excuse me, Malik McLean out of the transfer portal coming over from Florida State. Locked on Knowles host. You remember him well. And it exactly, it hasn't really worked out. McLean hasn't seen a lot of playing time. Dante Cephas has seen more playing time as of late. But in this case, whether it was Mike Yersich calling plays or J1 Sider or Ty Howell, it doesn't matter. Penn State has really gone away from the wide receivers. Production is down. Plays just attempts trying to go to them are down. It seems like Penn State has no confidence in its wide receiver base right now, whether that's Keandre Lambert Smith, Dante Cephas, McLean, Liam Clifford, Caden Saunders. They just really there, there's not a game changer in this group. I there's I think a lot of good talent in the recruiting class for 2024. However, guys that could step in and play day one or at least compete for snaps and be a second or third string player. Probably not the case. That's a big ask for a Peter Gonzalez or a Tizier Denmark. Even if they enroll early, that is a lot to ask of them to say, hey, you're playing day one, get ready to go. So thank goodness for the transfer portal in this sense, Brian, because Penn State, I think, is going to have to rebuild from the ground up once again if they're not only going to help out the offensive coordinator, the new one, but Drew Aller or Bo Perbula, whoever that is. I'm 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 into. I'm not trying to start any drama. Drew Aller's going to be the quarterback in 2024, but you need to get weapons around him since he is a true pocket passer. Yeah, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day, and we were talking about how good Penn State's defense was, and we started talking about the team. Defense. <laughs> and it's being wasted. I yeah. said, I said, bro, they can't, they can't complete a pass outside. Yeah. And he's like, who's their best receiver? I'm like, who can get off bump? And he, it was the silence on the phone. Yeah. Like we both watch Penn State. They don't have a receiver that can beat one-on-one -on -one coverage consistently that I've seen against upper west, right. upper echelon team. And that's bottom line. If you look at the teams that are ranked in the top 10, predominantly there are two things. They have pretty good defense. You know, Penn State obviously qualifies, might be the best in the country, but they also have teams that 
or passing attacks that hit 20 plus yard plays in the passing game. Mm-hmm. Which one of those two does Penn State not do? Defense or the passing? You know, it's just they're it's so ironic. They're elite defensively against the run, yeah. the pass, whatever. And then offensively, they are their their running backs are getting slugged into the this just yep. mud pit because we're gonna stack the box. Yep. We've got average corners, they'll be okay. Yep. Your receivers aren't any good. Anybody can run the game plan generically. I know there's some nuances mm-hmm. there, obviously, yep. but until Penn State beats one-on-one coverage, their NFL running backs are going to look like mid-level Big Ten running backs quite often. You can't make eight and nine guys miss all the time. It's ridiculous. I'm glad you said it because the way that Ohio State and Michigan approached it perfectly, they tested the waters, they played cover <laughs> two, or at least they had two safeties back to see, okay, what is Penn State going to do in their passing game? So sure. there's one of two. there's one of two things here. Michigan, Ohio State, and these opponents, even West Virginia. Now, West Virginia didn't work out so well because, yes, Keanu Lambert-Smith and the passing attack were better than West Virginia's secondary. But the same can't be said for Ohio State, which is the number one secondary in the nation. It's the number one pass defense. They're allowing the lowest amount of yards per pass attempt, and it's really not even close. Michigan is top five. So is Rutgers. And all those games have in common. Drew Aller did not do well. Drew Aller didn't even do that great against the likes of Illinois or Northwestern. So congrats. Dante Cephas and Keandre Lambert-Smith can show out against the likes of Maryland, can show out against the likes of West Virginia, Indiana. But when it comes down to it, the games that matter the most, they can't. And it's and it's not like, it's not like okay, Michigan secondary is winning six out of 10 battles. It's nine out of 10, if that. I, Keandre Lambert-Smith and, and Dante <clears throat> Cephas, as far as I'm concerned, didn't even catch a pass against Rutgers. It's bad. <laughs> I don't even know how you follow that up. Like Penn State has such a tradition, and they've had so many good receivers over the years, and yet right now they're struggling to find a number two. I didn't say number one. I said a number two, and that's the problem. Like Again, at the end of the day, if you cannot hit explosive passing games, you will mitigate your other players. And – even if you had a mobile quarterback, and I know Drew's a little more of a pocket guy, he'd be mitigated too because you'd still have a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage. Sure. If they don't fix receiver, this pro- they will be – I know Penn State fans really don't want to hear this. They're, they're going to go 10-2 and two this year, regular season. Mm-hmm. They're going to start going 8-4, and 9-3 and three with the teams joining the league because they're not going to beat Michigan or Ohio State doing this. Oregon is just as good as those teams talent-wise. Yeah. It's not trending in the right direction. They have to. They, they were at like a two out of 10 at receiver. Yeah. And they, I don't understand how that's possible. Exa- exactly. And a lot of these schools, what do they like to do? Washington, Oregon, USC, maybe not so much UCLA, but that's interesting because Chip Kelly is there and he's the architect of those really good Oregon offenses. But besides the point, those the modern versions, the current versions of those programs all like to get into what, Brian? Shootouts. So Penn State right now is not adept they are not they don't have the players to get into a scoring a, a scoring fest a shootout with Oregon or Washington Kalen DeBoer right Kalen DeBoer I would probably yeah. say is one of the best offensive minds in all of the country at, at this point now they're all coming yes. over to the Big 10 that look that that conversation those previews are for a different day right how they would match up head to head especially when Michael Penix is going to be gone Caleb Williams Bo Nix etc there's going to be so much change overhaul there but Penn State has to overhaul the wide receiver spot. Uh, you and I were kind of conversating beforehand, having a little bit of a conversation because the transfer portal, well, it's a good thing. College players have the ability to go play wherever they want to. But it's also, that it's a double-ended sword, Brian. Coaches are not afraid to tell their players if they're not working out, you need to go into the transfer portal unwillingly. And this might be a case for Penn State at wide receiver. I feel like it's a completely open competition. I'm not saying Dante Cephas and Keandre Lambert-Smith are being shown the door. Trey Wallace, all of those three guys could return, and that would be a good start to rebuilding the wide receiver core. But I would think everybody after that, their job is not safe. That's kind of the nature of the beast. Um, As we were talking before the show, I know there's a school that told about seven guys in one spot last year. I'll leave the school one position out, but... You need to leave. Yeah. That was it. 
Penn State's probably a little more politically correct in the school I'm talking about, but at the same time, why are you here? Those end of year meetings, that's why they've had them for a hundred years. How did yeah. you do this? It's like a job performance thing. What did you oh, yeah. do oh, yeah. academically, socially? Are you doing your job in the weight room? All those things go along with team building. And I'm guessing they're missing somewhere in there. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but some of that's missing. You can't be Penn State level recruits at receiver and look this bad. There's a disconnect. They need to figure it out. And if Marcus Haggins really wants to put a stamp on on his look, make he has to look good at his job too. So I think all options, all cards are on the table. I, I again, I'm not saying you try to push Dante Cephas and Keandre Lambert Smith out, but you bring some competition in because Keandre Lambert Smith is not a number one wide receiver. Neither is Dante Cephas. They are good complementary twos and threes. But Penn State with a pocket passer like Drew Aller, you do need a game changer. The uh, early in this point, right? It's transfer portal season, Brian. We we know that it, it's starting to happen, but there there's not a lot of names other than the one that everyone's looking at. And I'll, I'll throw it out there because Penn State's contacted him along with twenty plus other schools, and that's Raymond Cottrell, the Texas A&M player in the transfer portal, still really young. I think he's got four years of eligibility left, and you might know him well because he hails from Milton, Florida. I know him very well. Uh, he he was a grown man when he was a junior in high school. So, <laughs> yeah, he had offers from everywhere, Georgia, Florida, Auburn, right. everybody. So, yeah, he could go in and play somewhere pretty early. He just has to learn to play a book like anybody else. Sure. He's a big-bodied boundary receiver that teams have to go man-to-man -man with, and he's 210, 215. Yeah. So, yeah, he would be a kid that I know that across the country he's heard from schools everywhere. I have no idea where Ray's going. He could probably he could a little earlier. Yeah, yeah, he can pretty much go wherever. But nice guy, easy going. He's from the Pensacola area, and mm -hmm. uh, he's 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 probably one Penn State would be happy to snag. So Penn State still needs to establish. I mean, we're ever so close to the early signing period for the Nittany Lions and all of college football in the middle of December. Any surprises? What could happen on signing day? What are the big rumblings? Brian and I will discuss in just a moment, but let's hear from another one of our sponsors on today's episode, and that is Team Ticker, the one-of-a-kind sports signs for you Nittany Lion fans. That gorgeous thing to my left is a Team Ticker sign. Whether it's football, men's and women's basketball, baseball, soccer, or softball, Team Ticker has got you covered. Never miss a game as the high-tech retro display provides a countdown to the next big game as well as daily updates of the latest team news, stats, schedules, standings, rankings, and so much more. The mobile app is super easy to use. That's how you get it set up. You connect the mobile app to your internet, and that's how you get those daily updates so that you know exactly what's going on. It's easy to hang on the wall, too. I had it up and running in just a matter of minutes. Each sign is officially licensed, meeting high-quality standards, and is assembled by hand in the United States, Team Ticker is the ultimate upgrade to your Nittany Lions sports collection. And once you hang it on the wall, it's going to be the talk of all your fellow Nittany Lion fans. If you're looking for that eye-catching item to showcase your team pride or a gift for that special Nittany Lions fan, it is the holiday season. You go to TeamTicker.com and flash sale going on for the holiday season. Right now, Team Ticker is offering $50 off your Team Ticker purchase for your Nittany Lions sign. $50 off when you use promo code Locked on and now going through the holiday season. So take advantage of that at teamticker.com, the one of a kind sports sign promo code locked on for $50 off your purchase. And in this final segment, Brian, let's discuss what Penn State could hypothetically do here at, at the deadline for the early signing period. And college football recruiting is not done. They got guys like Chimney Ono later in the cycle, and that is proving to be, you know, four star offensive lineman good added depth. He projects very well as he continues to build upon his time at Penn State. But Penn State, I think, needs to they got to flip somebody. I I know oh. this is the obvious one and this is somebody that has been and now, here's the thing though, Brian. I don't have any breaking news. I don't have any insight other than the fact that it's very quiet right now. And that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. I know so much can change over the next, what, three to four weeks here, right? Roughly before national sign, the early national signing day. But I, I got to think that Penn State, unless they're going to go all in on the transfer portal, look, Nick Marsh up at Michigan State, I know he's still verbally committed. Their Michigan State is kind of losing recruits left and right here. 
I think that is a player that he that Penn State was his choice until Michigan State got back in the fold with its NIL offers. But then all those offers got pulled when Mel Tucker was fired and the NI one of the largest NIL yeah. backers for Sparty said we're canceling all future NIL deals. That's a big deal. Okay. So one that we don't hear, we haven't heard anything right now, but one that does make sense and one to keep an eye on and you need wide receivers. And I'm not saying Nick Marsh plays day one, but he at least has an advantage above all the other current recruits. He would be the best wide receiver recruit in the class of 2024 for Penn state. If they were in fact to get his commitment and then have him sign. Yeah, that's one for sure. But uh, back to your point about quiet, don't worry about that. Good oh, things happen good. in the shadows with recruiting, depending on your perspective. Um, Penn State's going to be out trying to poach kids. Uh, Franklin, as I've said many times on this show, the one thing I'm not worried about is his recruiting prowess. He gets mm -hmm. after it, man. That's just something he enjoys. And many, like Cider, obviously, tremendous recruiter. I think he's as good a recruiter as there is in the country. They're not going to have any problems there. I'll, I would wager they'll get at least two kids committed elsewhere before signing day and or haven't committed yet. And we're just getting into the crazy season of the transfer portal. So between the two, Penn State's probably trying to figure out how they want to do it. It's more complex now because you still have 85 scholarships. How do you balance that? that? You know, we were just talking about some of the receivers possibly leaving. Well, if they do, each one, that's a scholarship they can use for a portal kid or a kid from the junior college ranks or prep player. So it is complex because these parts literally change by the day. So I think quiet is okay. They got to figure things out and they're probably trying to finish this season, but starting next week, I got to believe Penn state's going to be all in on recruiting. Oh yeah, most definitely there's, and then defensive line is something to keep an eye on. There's guys like Ernest Willer who has Penn state in his top four. Andrew Dennis just decommitted from Michigan state. He's a high profile offensive lineman and Penn state's got a lot of offensive line commits, especially over the past few cycles. But in this one and they and they have a lot of guys committed in 2024 but they're still looking to add to that it's kind of like i think any positions like this now especially with the transfer portal you can never have too many the guys will weed themselves out through through open good spirited fair competition and that's why it, it's important to take two quarterbacks why penn state is taking two running backs every single cycle you don't want to be left thin because penn state saw the consequences of that at the quarterback spot, and now they're really seeing it with the wide receiver spot. Look, it, it's part of it, man. Sometimes things just go sideways. Could anybody have predicted what's going on at the receiver spot? I mean, realistically, you know, you have to find ways to adjust. So yep. right now the most important thing that Penn State does is their plan. You talk about the offseason, how you train, academics and all that. Well, they got a small window here. Between now and December 20th is probably going to change how Penn State football is for the next three to four years because they need a couple of key transfers that are younger guys, you know, Cottrell or somebody like that. And they also got to find a way to flip somebody that's an elite recruit. These are not easy tasks. The Penn State wide receiver situation aside, obviously they're going to go after that. Here's a question for you. On defense, what do you think they need the most? Corner? You always need corner, so I just throw that out there. King's probably headed to the NFL, so... Where else would they need a spot besides a receiver? Yeah, asking me personally, you have to keep an eye on defensive back because Kalen King is most likely going to go to the NFL, but Johnny Dixon has played his way into an NFL spot. Daquan Hardy is going to be most likely leaving. I know that they do have their COVID eligibility, but you also just have to factor in, aren't they tired of college football at this point? They've played it for a, a long time. Now you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm going to go. You have to go to school still. You have to pursue a degree. You can't just play college football right. for the heck of it. Uh, so I wonder what those guys are going to. But you, for Penn State, you could hypothetically lose all three starters at, at your defensive back spots, and that leaves you with guys like Cam Miller, Zion Tracy, uh, King Mack. Are those guys ready to start as first-year starters? They're only playing. The, some of those guys are only first-year players, freshmen. Uh, so defensive back, and then what does Manny Diaz do? Right. So this could be a very interesting very off season. All, all around, Brian, I'm glad you posed that question. I know we're probably going to have that discussion a little more once the games are all finished and wrapped up because there's plenty uh, of open-ended discussions uh, on those topics. But I always appreciate your time, Brian. I am thankful. I am grateful for you. Anytime we can talk recruiting, 
Brian Smith, the Locked On podcast recruiting expert. He's also the host of Locked On Seminoles, Locked On Knowles. Go check out that show as well. Happy Thanksgiving, Brian, to you and your family. I appreciate Thank you. the time Same to you. as always. Appreciate it. And uh, everybody enjoy their Thanksgiving.